Alright guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking about all of the awesome stuff coming to patch 257 for PC on April 30th of this year. And dude, this is going to be a doozy of a freaking update. There's a lot of stuff announced and I guarantee not all of it will come, but this is what's currently stated and we're going to go through all of this. So if at any point in this video you find yourself liking this video, be sure to beat the crap out of that like button. Always helps me out and uh, yeah, let's just go. So there are four creatures coming in this update and this is probably going to be everybody's favorite one, the giant bee. It is a tameable, non-rideable flying creature and they live in hives located around the island, especially in the redwoods and on cliff sides. Um, their little hives are surrounded by a bunch of drone bees which protect it and the drone bees are not tameable by the way but the queen is. We're going to get to that now in a second. But the drone bees have really nasty stings. Um, you don't want to you don't want to go up against these guys without a really good creature with you because it's going to be pretty hard to take these things down especially with the amount of them that are actually there so to tame the queen you need to break into the hive and for that you'll probably need the beekeeper costume which is a new set of armor that is going to be coming to the game it's going to make it easy to keep the bees and also going to be like it's going to make it easy to actually get the bees too so once you tame the queen the queen can build a new hive um at like i guess at your base location maybe you'll have to put it on like wander or something it, it's probably some sort of method like that but inside this hive it will lay eggs to create your own drone army because the drones will not be tamed to you they'll be tamed to the queen and they will follow her and her every command they will follow her into a battle this queen could be a really good creature for a massive battle or even just a base defense as well the hive will produce honey, which is also going to be pretty good for uh, making traps, which will attract wild creatures. Um, and then also, it could potentially be used for some sort of taming method, maybe for a dire bear, I don't know, or a kibble or a food source or something. I don't know, but we're going to have to wait and see. I'm really excited for this creature. Let me know what you guys think, and let's move on. So another creature is the Deodon. Um It's often known as the Hell Pig. It's a tameable, rideable omnivore. And this thing will hunt and eat anything. It has a rapid healing ability which allows it to basically just survive absolutely anything. Uh, it's going to be really hard to kill and also even harder to tame. <laughs> so essentially when you have this thing tamed it's going to be essential for hunting trips or planned attacks or even base defenses because it has the ability to heal nearby tamed creatures or players. So it's kind of like a Lystro, except it, it heals instead of gives them levels. It's really handy. I cannot wait for this thing, though it's going to be super hard to keep because it's going to eat you out of house and home. So make sure that you guys collect a lot of food before you bring one of these back home because it's... Oh, you're going to need it. So another creature coming is the Leo Pluridon. It is a tameable, rideable sea mount. And it's around mid-size, it's going to be maybe the same size as like a Dunkley. They're often found in the reefs of the island awaiting to ambush passerbys. It has a very short aggro radius so it won't really chase its prey for too much longer. Um, it's not very fast, it's not very strong, but it does make up for that in other areas because it's going to be kind of similar slightly to a Diplocalus. Um, in the way that it's actually going to give you a buff for oxygen. So slightly different, it doesn't feed you the oxygen, but it gives you a buff. So it's going to be kind of one of those creatures that can replace a scuba tank for early game or even late game as well. So essentially it's it's going to give you like the buff probably of like a Lazarus Chowder um, because it has like oils that basically allow your oxygen to deplete a lot slower than normal. Um, so like late game, it, I mean, it could still be a pretty good creature because you don't have to waste resources on scuba tanks. You can kind of wear whatever you want. You're a little bit safer in the water as well, I'd say so. But uh, yeah, it could be a really handy creature. I can't wait for it. It looks really cool. So let me know what you guys think of this one. Okay, so the last creature coming in this patch is the Kentrosaurus. It is a tameable, non-rideable herbivore. Um, it's a lot smaller than a Stego, but it does make up for that in other ways. Um, it has very good self-defense qualities, and from the sounds of it, I kind of think that maybe the spikes on its back will act as if they were spiked walls, as in like the actual structures. So you could nearly have these around your base instead of actual spiked walls. Um, so these guys are going to be really good for like hurting anything attacking your base. They're going to be essential for like defending and probably pretty good for attacking too. Um, they can ignore armor values with the spikes because they just pierce right through. Um, the spikes will probably also cause some sort of bleeding effect to creatures I imagine um, just from reading the dossier here. 
Um, so they cannot be ridden because of all those massive spikes on its pack, but they are really good as a pack animal. They do have some sort of pack boost. Um, when you have more of them around, they're gonna basically defend your base for a lot further. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking that maybe you set a point for them to come back to you and they're gonna essentially kind of protect the whole area around there. So maybe they're gonna have some sort of radius thing to that. Um, not completely sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but just from the dossier, it kind of seems like it might be something like that, but I could be easily wrong with this type of thing. Um, so yeah, that is the Kentrosaurus, very cool creature. Now let's move on to all the tech gear. So we will be getting the tech cloning chamber in this update. It is a new structure for the tech tier and it's going to allow you to clone your dinos for the cost of element or maybe it could be element shards, uh, either one or the other. Basically, there is a catch to this whole situation. It's not just going to simply clone your dino and just give you another one. When you are cloning, it could, it has like a really, like it has a chance. I'm not sure if it's a small chance or a large chance, but it has a chance of destroying your creature altogether. And also it has a chance of making a better creature than the previous ones. So it's kind of like a gamble, this thing. It's going to be gambling your dinos like game. So, I mean, the reward for getting a better creature is going to be really good because you can, you can then put that creature back in and clone that one most likely. I'd imagine you can because... In any sort of media, you can always clone a clone, I believe. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see with that. But if you can clone your clone, you can keep getting better and better dinos with this thing. <sighs> so I essentially, I, I recommend you go out, you go breed all of your favorite creatures and just have a bunch of them ready because you're probably going to lose a hell of a lot of them. Maybe like 10 Rexes, you could lose 5, but you could also get 5 really good ones. And then I guess that would make up for the 5 that you lost then. <laughs> So this is gonna be a really cool new feature. It's gonna be kind of like a step up from breeding because like Breeding in the game gives you a better creature because you imprint now if you take that imprinted creature Put that into the cloning chamber and you can get an even better creature. It's like the next step I don't know in my mind. It works that way um, may, Maybe you guys don't see it the same way, but I'm super excited for the cloning and uh, yeah Make sure you guys get your armies ready So next we have the tech turret which it's basically just a tech tier version of a normal turret already in the game. So they're going to run on element instead of electricity, I'd imagine, though they might also require a generator nearby. Um, they're going to shoot tech lasers, so they're going to be really good at defending your, ba your base against tech raiders because obviously tech tier versus tech tier is like the best way of doing it. So kind of like really, like it's a good step up, though I, I do feel like this should have been in the game months and months ago when they actually first introduced the tech tier because... I've done raids with tech tier and I mean like using industrial type stuff in your tech base just doesn't seem right so it would be a really good step up to have tech turrets and uh, yeah they look fantastic I can't wait to see them. So they are giving some love to one of the oldest creatures in this game. The Megalodon is getting a Tech Megalodon Saddle, which is going to be a huge advancement for that creature. Not a lot of people like that creature nowadays. It's not, it doesn't really hold up against any of the other creatures. And with this Tech Megalodon Saddle, it could be really good. Now, we don't know right now if it's actually going to have lasers on it, though that would be amazing. Sharks are, sharks with like freaking laser beams on them. We need that. It could also do something else. Maybe it could give it a speed buff. Maybe it could like make its jaws kind of like clamp down harder so it does like stronger bites or something. I don't really know, but like I can't wait to see this because honestly the Megalodon is so forgotten about at this stage, but now they're bringing it back into the fold. So let me know down below guys, what else do you think that they, they should put a tech saddle on? I know a lot of people are looking for a Spino to have a tech saddle. Um, what else should we get get like tech saddles for because they seem to be adding them to smaller creatures So let me know down below and let's move on So they are giving us a tech version of the grenade in the game, which is gonna be really awesome <laughs> Could you imagine normal grenades are pretty like they're they're okay They they devastate earlier on structures. So could you imagine what a tech grenade could do to a metal base? Oh man, <laughs> this is gonna be really really awesome um, so the tech grenades, the whole model for this and everything has been in the dev kit for the longest time, so it's really good to finally see it inside the game. It's, again, it's something we should have had at the very start of the tech tier, but I'm still happy they're adding it now, you know, better late than never. 
I guess. So uh, basically, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this thing is going to be able to, you're going to maybe be able to use them underneath the water. That would be really good to actually take down underwater bases with these tech grenades. Could be absolutely amazing. But uh, let me know what you guys think about this and let's move on. So next we have the tech cave and I've already talked about this so much before. This was supposed to come out in patch 256 if I remember correctly and uh, I've already completely talked about this. I've done videos all about this so you guys can watch those. I'll link them down below. But let's just talk about it a little bit here anyway. So it is the end game cave for Ark and it's going to require you to probably be of the tech tier. You're probably going to need maybe like max level to get into this cave or something. I can't imagine they're going to allow like early on tribes to actually go into this cave because it is the end game cave doesn't really make sense for that so the entrance now I've heard a long time ago that the entrance was supposed to be located on the volcano and with this new recent change that's going to be coming to the volcano I actually believe this now <laughs> so I'll talk about the volcano now in a minute but anyway inside of this cave you're going to find the ultimate life form boss which is going to be a boss that shifts between a giant tech dodo it's made out of like tech pieces shifts from a dodo to a megapithecus to a wyvern and possibly also there's a rex there too uh, maybe some other creatures i don't really know but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a boss that's gonna shift from one form to another after you defeat it so you have to defeat the boss several times over to actually completely beat it and with this we're also getting ascension now what does this mean um i'm not exactly sure I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know what Ascension is going to be, but from what I've heard, it's gonna be basically taking your survivor from what we currently are and putting us onto like the next level. So maybe with Ascension, we'll have like better stats or something. Maybe we'll have, maybe we'll be set back to level one and we'll have like all of our current stats, all of our current engrams, but we can like completely level again. So I guess kind of like prestiging in different games, maybe it could be something like that. That would be really cool. But uh, yeah, so that is like the tech cave. Um, there's, it's also coming to the center too, eventually. Um, I heard it's gonna be really deep sea in the, in the center. So it could also be deep sea in the island, but we don't really know, but I'll talk about the volcano changes now in a second, because this stuff is going to be game changing. So Ark is going to have a lot of awesome things in this update but this is going to be something that everybody is going to be really excited about the volcano is getting it's going to become active <laughs> so the volcano is essentially going to be able to erupt periodically so it can like i don't know if there's going to be like a timer if it's going to erupt every like couple days in game maybe every couple weeks in game or something i don't really know but the volcano will be able to erupt. Now, what this could possibly do to the island when it does erupt, because I imagine it's not just going to be something like, oh, look, the volcano's erupting, blah, 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 blah. When volcanoes erupt, a lot of bad stuff happens. There could be like a mega heat wave on the island or maybe like a massive soot storm, um, like where you can't really see it all, or maybe some smog or like it could be anything. There could be so many really crazy things. It could essentially tor turn it could essentially turn the island into scorched earth for the duration of the volcano eruption and pretty much like I would recommend if you're living anywhere near the volcano if you have like a forge in the volcano move that stuff now like before this update drops because you could have all of that stuff wiped now obviously like wildcard are still able to do this type of thing because technically the game is not complete and uh they could essentially change the whole volcano, completely remove all those resources, or I, I really don't know at all. And like a thought crossed my mind um, just before I did this video, I was thinking that maybe they, they could actually add a second volcano onto the island. That That's a thought, nothing confirmed, just a thought in my head. They could potentially add another volcano, not to upset all of the current players that go to the volcano for metal, crystal, obsidian, everything that's already there and all the amazing bases that you guys probably already have built there too will get wiped if they do something to that volcano. So potentially it could be a new one. I don't really know, just speculation in my mind, but uh, just something to think about there because I mean, Wildcard will get hate for doing anything to the volcano, though I, as I said, like they can still do this type of thing. The game is not complete. So yeah, that is, um, that's gonna be an absolutely amazing change, um, just having, like, an active volcano will give Ark a voice, and it's, 
it's going to be loud, and uh, it's probably going to kill anything that's around there too, because like lava in the game instantly almost kills players, and pretty much kills your creatures really, really quick, um, so this could be devastating. And also, I think that maybe the tech cave entrance will be on this volcano. It would make sense, it would be a very dangerous area to go to, so like late game, you'd probably have to be late game to actually go in. Maybe you have to go into the tech cave while the volcano is erupting, maybe a passage opens or something. We don't really know at all, like this is just speculation in my mind, but uh, yeah, really, really awesome. And uh, guys, that pretty much gets us to the end of the patch notes here. There's a couple other things like new explorer notes coming, uh, new hairstyle, new facial hair, more UI changes, different things like that, but kind of all like smaller things. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful at all, um, make sure that you guys beat the crap out of that like button. And I do these videos all the time, so make sure that you guys subscribe if you want to see all those. I'm going to have like dev kit videos and all these other videos coming out about all these creatures. So if you guys want to see these things in action, make sure that you stay tuned on the channel here. And uh, yeah, I will catch you next time.